Hey there, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna walk you through my workflow and a bit of my structure for a project to show you how I work really efficiently inside of DaVinci Resolve. Let's jump in. Those of you who have been following the channel for a while may realize that we're not in the same room that we used to be in. We are in fact in the new office, which I just built out, and this is the first video inside of the new office. I'm not jumping into the specifics of the office in this video. I will be creating a separate video highlighting all of the cool new features that I now have at my disposal for creating new content for my YouTube channel. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. So here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. First things first, we're going to set up our project settings. Click on the gear icon. Under timeline resolution, we'll set it to 3840 by 2160. Make sure our frame rate is set to 23.976. We'll come over here to color management, set this to DaVinci YRGB color manage, uncheck automatic color management, and then come down to output color space and select Rec 709A, and then click save and change our settings. Next, we'll import our footage. And what I like to do whenever I shoot slow-mo clips like these 60 FPS clips, I like to convert them to 23.976 right up front. So let's go ahead and hold control and select all of our footage. Click FPS here to filter by frame rate. Then we'll click on the first 60 FPS clip, hold shift and select the bottom one. We'll right click, go to clip attributes and set this to 23.976 and then hit OK. Click clip name to reorganize by the title of the clip. Now that we have all the footage in our project, we'll navigate over to the edit page. From here, we'll click on master and create a new bin. And this will be our timelines bin. This is where we put all of our different timelines. Open that up and we'll create a timeline for our interview selects. And we'll create a new timeline for our B-roll selects. We'll create a new timeline for the actual edit that we'll be doing. I like to name it V1 and then the name of the project. And as I have revisions from the client, I'll change that to V2, V3, V4, et cetera. So let's go ahead and open up our B-roll selects and we'll grab all of our B-roll footage. I know I have B-roll footage on the FX3 and the A7S3, so we'll hold Control and click and click Control or Command A to select all the footage and then drag it onto the timeline. I know these long takes are the interviews, so I'm gonna go ahead and just ripple delete by holding shift and clicking delete. Same with this one and these ones. Now for the B-roll, some of it slowed down and some of it isn't, and I don't typically use any of the audio from these, so I'm just gonna hold alt and select all of our audio and click delete. So the next step here in the B-roll section would be to sift through all of this B-roll footage and select all of the clips that I actually want to keep and edit with. We're basically just taking all of this footage and refining it down to some selects that we can use to assemble our full edit with. Before we jump into my editing workflow, I first want to highlight some of the keyboard shortcuts that I've assigned inside of DaVinci Resolve, as well as a couple mouse shortcuts as well. The first two shortcuts that I use all the time are Q and W, and I use these all the time to shave off the beginning and the end of the clip. So if I go somewhere in the middle of the clip here and I wanna remove this back half of the clip, I can click Q and it'll ripple delete the back half. And if I go to the end of a clip, I can click W and it'll ripple delete the front end of the clip. The next shortcut is Shift Z. And what I have that set up to do is recenter the program viewer. So if I'm zoomed into a clip here, I can just hit Shift Z and it'll make the program viewer fit the view. The next shortcut, I've reassigned all of my number keys to color coding. So I can highlight a clip and click one and it'll make it gold, two will make it brown, and so on and so forth. Another helpful shortcut is Control Backslash, and this quickly brings up my safe areas and the center mark so I can easily tell if my framing is correct. I've also changed the shortcut for plus and minus to zoom in and zoom out without holding Control as the modifier. And as for my mouse, I have the Logitech MX Master 3S with these two buttons on the side and then the scroll wheel. These two buttons, I have the front one as zoom in and the back one as zoom out. 
And then the scroll wheel, obviously you can scroll the timeline that way with modifiers such as control and shift to do different things on the timeline. But then if you click the middle button, that deletes. Quick demonstration, I can zoom in and zoom out right here and I can highlight a clip and then click on the mouse and it deletes. And this works in tandem with holding shift and clicking the middle mouse to do a ripple delete. So let's say I have all my B-roll clips selected and I wanna start assembling an edit. What I do is I utilize a pancake timeline where I have two timelines stacked on top of each other and the bottom timeline I use as my assembly space and I can just click and drag clips from the top timeline onto the bottom timeline while keeping all of the contents copied in the top timeline. So it makes it a non-destructive workflow. To set that up, we'll click this button here and under the timeline view options, select this one. And then on the right over here, we'll click the plus timeline option. And this adds a second timeline down below. Now from the drop down, we'll select V1 edit. And this is where we can start to assemble our edit. And we can simply click and drag clips down here while we create our video. And if you have the interview selects, you can click this button here and we can then select our interview selects. And then we can come over and grab any of our interview clips, drag them here. And we can do the same process that we did for the B-roll selects and we would filter through here and find all of the clips that we really liked from all the different interviews. And once you do have a bunch of clips selected from the interviews, you can grab all the best takes and bring them down below and start the assembly process for your edit. And as you can see, if I click and drag a clip from this top timeline down to the bottom timeline, it's non-destructive because the clip stays here, which is great because then I can maintain all of the good quality clips up here while I get creative down in this area. And I know that if I delete something, it's not gone forever. I can still find it in this top interview select section. Same thing goes for B-roll. If there's a clip of B-roll that I really like from here, I can click and drag it down below and I maintain its existence up here while still cutting with it down here. And I can get rid of it here even if I don't want it, it's still up here. So that's just a little look into my workflow inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's taken many years to develop a good system and a good process that works really efficiently. And this is subject to change over time, but as of right now, this workflow helps me work really well and get things done in an organized fashion. If you have any questions or suggestions to improve the workflow, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. Anyways, that's it for me. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on future content. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.